job, boy. I reckon it's all over but the funeral march. Don't talk that way, Fuzzy. Billy. On my grave, write this epitaph. He might have been a buzzard. He might have been a saint. His best pals were Billy and Jeff. He died with no complaint. Beautiful, Fuzz. Beautiful. That's funny. I don't feel a mite of pain now. Sure felt something bust inside of me. All right, get going. Tell me you had a twin brother. I haven't. Let me take a look. Well, Billy the Kid. So we meet at last. Surprised at the resemblance? Ah, I sure am, Lieutenant. You seem to have known about it right along. For some time. As a matter of fact, I've been very anxious to meet my devil before he and his friends go to prison. Well, it's not everybody can be in prison and the army at the same time. That's true. You know, it's really too bad, Billy, that we're, well, not on the same side of the fence. Well, in a way we are, Lieutenant. Then you wouldn't understand that. Oh, but I do. However, lawlessness, even when fighting for the underdog, is still lawlessness. Put these men away until the marshal arrives tomorrow morning. I hope so. Wait here while I take this invitation to the lieutenant. All right. you from Aunt Mary. Oh, good. Thank you. Dear Ted, it make me very happy by attending my wedding to George Fremont on August the 2nd. Wow. Mr. Fremont in the East in a day or two. I'm sending you this letter by one of the ranch boys that, that you'll be sure to get a loving aunt very tired. So tell my aunt that I'll be out to the wedding that bells on. I'll catch the stagecoach in the morning. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Make a move, Lieutenant. Sorry, me and my buddies can't stay around here longer. 
Since I figure I'm on the wrong side of the fence, I'd better get back to where I belong. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take your uniform. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll send it back to you. Yeah, cleaned and pressed. You know, there ain't a jail in the country serves food as good as the army. Come on. If you get hungry, you can have the rest. Get away with this, Billy. Maybe not. I hope I'm not inconveniencing you, Lieutenant. How's that? It's not bad. Adios. We sort of gotten lost around here. How'd these two break loose? Why, they just... Never mind. I'll take care of them. Go and find Billy the kid. Yes, sir. I hope Billy got away. Yeah. He will if we hurry. Billy! As I live and breathe... That's what we want to keep doing. Come on. Morrison's last stand. That's right, I'm leaving the post for about an hour. I'm taking these two men with me. The Major should happen to ask for me, tell him. to get my hands on them stinking coyotes. No, no, we haven't got time for that. Hey, we better get where we can pick that shoulder up. Yeah, let's get out of here. How's that feel? That's not bad, Jeff. <laughs> Lucky it wasn't a little lower. Yeah. You know, the thing I don't understand is why those hombres wanted to get rid of Lieutenant Morrison. I've been wondering the same thing. Sure, they weren't after me. Seems like they were just sort of waiting for him to come out. Say, Billy, maybe we ought to warn the lieutenant. Yeah, maybe we ought to keep our noses out of somebody else's business. First thing you know, we'll be accused of murder. I think you're right, Fuzzy. We uh, could send Fuzzy back to warn the lieutenant. No, you don't. <laughs> I'll slave over a hot stove cooking. I'll even take in washing. But I'll be dug nabbed if I'll stick my neck out to get hung. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got there, Fudge? The letter I found in the lieutenant's pocket. Don't you know better than to read other people's mail? I know better than to wash other people's clothes, but what good does it do me? <coughs> Say, do you know who uh, the lieutenant's aunt was? No. You don't pay to be ignorant. <clears throat> all right, all right, come on. Who is the lieutenant's aunt? Mary Todd. Mary Todd? Why, she's the richest woman in the West. Old Daniel Todd left her a fortune. I understand she's blind, too. Listen, wait a minute. How do you know that Mary Todd is Lieutenant Morrison's aunt? It says so right here in the letter. Here, let me see. 
Dear Ted, you make me very happy by attending my wedding to George Fremont on August the 2nd. Mr. Fremont is arriving from the east in a day or two. Sending you this letter by one of the ranch boys so you'll be sure to get it on time. Your loving aunt, Mary Todd. A marriage, an attempted murder, and blind Mary Todd, the richest woman in the West. You know, somehow I have an idea that all ties up together. Naturally, Turtle. When Mr. Fremont and I are married, you will take orders from him. Yes, Miss Mary. I haven't heard from him since we were children. That's a long time, Turtle. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Fremont now. Yes, sir. I reckon. And he's probably got the just little piece with him. Take care of their horses, Turtle. Yes, ma'am. Turtle, you're just the man I wanted to say. Hey, Mill, do you think that the old gal will get wise? Uh, don't go soft on me at this time. But what about the real George Fremont? You promised to take care of him the same as you did Lieutenant Morris. That's just what I was getting ready to tell Turtle. Turtle, you take two men, meet the stagecoach at Redwood Pass. And remember, I want George Fremont dead, with no letters or papers left to identify him as the real Fremont. You get it? Yes, boss. Meet me in town later. All right. You're so nervous, you remind me of a real groom. But don't get too nervous, Mr. Fremont. Remember, no one knows what the real George Fremont looks like. Not even Mary. Besides, she's blind. Sure. Sure, Mel. Now listen. Pretty soon you'll be married. Then we'll have everything our own way. The Todd Ranch, the Todd Fortune, the Pioneer Stagecoach Line, the P&M Railroad will all be ours. Now brace up. Come on. Sure, sure, Mel. Hello, Miss Mary. Good morning, Mr. Mark. George. Mary. After all these years, the same lovely Mary Todd. Well, I'm aside, uh, you and Mr. Fremont probably have a lot to talk over after 40 years. 40 years? That's a long time, isn't it, George? Uh, oh, yes, yes. It sure is a long time. Well, I'll see you again. Drop by my office later. All right. Let's sit down, George. We have a lot to talk about. Just as you say, Mary. That letter from Mary Todd's got me thinking. Yeah, you're going to think yourself right into trouble. Spelled P-R-I-S-O-N. It's a little uneven. Come on, Jeff. You folks can go ahead and go to jail, not me.
be the sheriff. Let's get out of here quick. What are we stopping here for? If we're going to jail, let's go for a reason. The ornery tadpoles. Take it easy, Fuzzy. What's the lieutenant? trying to nail him back at Fort Culver. Yeah, we've been blamed for a lot of things in our time. Most of them we didn't do. Now we're blamed for a murder by the man who was murdered. Well, can't prove Lieutenant Morrison we're innocent. Maybe we can prove to Aunt Mary. Why, well, there's not a sheriff living that'd give us a chance to prove anything. Say, maybe the lieutenant was going to Aunt Mary's wedding. But Lieutenant Morrison's still going to that wedding. First, you'd better dig a grave. Dig a grave? You mean you're gonna... No, Fuzz, just the body. From now on, I'm Lieutenant Morrison. We had to shoot that lieutenant all over again. What do you mean you had to shoot him over? I thought you boys got him at Fort Culver. So did I, but there he was in the stagecoach with that George Freeman fellow. Were you sure you got him this time? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Didn't we, boys? All right, give me the identification. Well, I'm going to tell you, boss, I didn't... Come on, come on. I didn't have time to get him. The sheriff came just as they're going to take him away from him. Well, you bubbling fool. My plan isn't worth two cents without those identifications. Howdy, man. Hello, Sheriff. Things are so quiet around, I thought I'd drop over for a little game of cards. Yeah, I'm glad you came. That's he's pretty law by Well, that's because we've got a good sheriff. Turtle, haven't you got something to do? Yeah, boss. Come on, fellas. Well, Sheriff, I guess you're getting all set for Mary Todd's wedding. You bet I am. Say, the whole town will turn out. I reckon uh, George Freeman will be coming in on the stagecoach. I'll be here most any minute now. But Fremont isn't traveling by stage. In fact, he's here now. At Mary Todd's ranch. Hey, uh, Bill, don't you think you've sort of taken a chance in personating that lieutenant? No, I don't think so, Jeff. Yeah, we, we ought to drift out of here. The lieutenant accused me of shooting him before he died. I gotta prove different. See you boys in town. I hope he's got a rabbit's foot with him.
Sounds like trouble. to Billy. Yeah, and I wonder what happened to the stagecoach. Sheriff, there, there's, uh, there's been a double murder. Murder? Yes, sir. I was on my way from Fort Culver to attend my aunt's wedding. We were attacked by bandits. This way. Who's that? I don't know, Sheriff. There was nothing to identify the man. Some of you men take care of the body. Howdy, Dad. Now, how do you do? I didn't recognize you first. Must be something special to bring you into town. You on a furlough? Yes, in a way. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking of resigning from the Army. How come? Well, to tell you the truth, I think that my Aunt Mary may need my protection. Uh -huh. Aunt Mary's getting married right away. She'll have a husband to protect her. That's right. However, I wouldn't let that worry me too much. My Aunt Mary's got enough money to support me for the rest of my life. Well, that's stooping mighty low, ain't it? A lot of people in this town would stoop a lot lower for Aunt Mary's money. Speaking for the good people of this town, I resent that. Resent all you like. Kind of surprised to hear you talk that way, Ted. You got a lot of surprises up my sleeve, Sheriff. Who was that? Why, don't you remember? That's Milt Crawford, the Justice of the Peace. Oh, sure, sure. Imagine my forgetting that. He's been taking care of your aunt's finances for quite a spell. Oh, he has. From the way he acted, you think that I was trying to retire on his money. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better be getting out to the ranch. You know, Aunt Mary's marriage is going to create quite a stir in this town. You bet it is. Say, Sheriff, can I borrow a horse? Why, sure. Come on over here at the hitch rack. Thank you. There you are, Lieutenant, and give my regards to your Aunt Mary. I will, Sheriff. I'll be very glad to see her. Skulls. 
So you kill the lieutenant all over again. Well, from the looks of it, he has nine lives. That's right, boss. Suppose you let me do the thinking. Now, we're going through with the wedding just as I planned. That gives you until tomorrow to get rid of Ted Morrison. Do you understand? Get out. There's Billy's horse. Yeah, but where's Billy? Jeff? I, I got a kind of a sickening feeling inside of me. Yeah, me too. Poor Billy, he, he's too young to die. You know, Fuzz, if, if we could just find his body so we could give him a decent burial. Yeah, that's uh, all my fault. How come? Well, remember those fellows that chased us from the cavalry? Yeah. Nothing would have happened to Billy if I hadn't have thought I was shot, and we could get away, and and Billy wouldn't have got mixed up in that lieutenant's murder. I'm a low-down tadpole. I'm a slimy worm. Yeah. I'm a no-account buzzard. I'm a sneaking coyote. Why, I ought to be putting a cage full of lions and tigers and let them tear me apart, bit by bit. Jeff? Kick me. No, Fuzzy, what's the use? Go on! No. I insist! I'll see who it is, Mary. All right, George. Well, what do you want? I'm uh, Ted Morrison, Lieutenant. Lieutenant Morrison? Yes, that's right. Is that you, Ted? Hello, yes, Aunt Mary. I'm so glad you're here. Well, Aunt Mary, I traveled 5,000 miles to see you happy. Oh, uh, Ted, uh, this is uh, George Fremont. Mr. Fremont, how to do, sir? Uh, I'm glad to know you. How is the Army, Ted? Oh, it's, it's fine, Aunt Mary, except that I've been thinking of resigning. Resigning? Yes, you see, I thought you might need some help around here. Ted, George will be here now. Well, perhaps Mr. Fremont can use some help. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, Mary, I'll have to be leaving you now, but I'll see you later. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Mr. Fremont. Goodbye. Mr. Fremont seemed a little nervous. Did he? Well, he's always been that way, even since he was a little boy. Oh, he has. Well, uh, tell me, Aunt Mary, tell me some more about George. Oh, I will. Let's have some tea. Blubbering. I know he's alive. But what do we do? That's what we started out to do. Yes, but suppose Shut they find out. Shut up. Here, these belong to Fremont. Take a look at that. Just like Morrison. The spitting image. That gives me an idea. Come on. Whoa! The man 
who got off as a stagecoach is none other than Billy the Kid. Wow. Say, Fuzzy, maybe we would better ride in sort of separate-like, just in case somebody's gotten wind of us being wanted by the cavalry. That's not a bad idea. Lieutenant Marshall wouldn't resign from the Army. He's too fine a man for that. Wait. You heard what he said about living off of Mary Todd's money. Would Lieutenant Morrison say a thing like that? Now, wait a minute, Mills. Maybe we're being a little too hasty. Hasty? Was Billy the Kid thinking of that when he murdered two men? That's right. Listen, this man is not only a murderer, he's an imposter. He came here to rob poor blind Mary Todd of all of her money. Gentlemen, as the man who's going to marry Mary Todd, I demand protection for her. We'll see that she gets protection. There's nothing I wouldn't do to prevent a hanging. I don't believe in him. But in this case, I say, hang Billy the Kid! This uh, man isn't Lieutenant Marson. Why don't you prove it? Well, who's asking you, stranger? My uh, conscience. Well, you and your conscience better stay out of this. Can't do that alone, mister. You'll get moving before the double hanging. To that hand, mister, you're mighty anxious to use a gun. Man! Man! Are you going to let a stranger interfere with law and order? What about Billy the Kid? And what about poor Mary Todd? For all we know, he might be murdering her this 30 minutes. That's right! Come on, let's go! We've got to stop them. Yeah, sure, but how? Wait a minute. I got to answer that question myself. Come on. What can I do for you? Howdy, Billy the Kid. Is your name's rather mixed? No, I think you're the one that has the names mixed. Hanging? What you mean? For the double murder on the stagecoach. Well, why don't you let the cavalry hang you? We'll save them the trouble. You seem rather anxious to get rid of me, Mr. Fremont. Who is it, Ted? Just some strangers wanting to know the direction to town, Aunt Mary. All right, let's get going. What are you going to do, Lieutenant? You stay here. I'm going to reconnoiter. Well, it won't be long now, Billy the Kid. Lieutenant Morrison, what in tarnation are you doing on the end of that rope? 
Just a case of mistaken identity, Lieutenant. Oh. Who do you think this man is? He's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid, my foot. That's Lieutenant Morris. Why, here's proof that he's Billy the Kid. I get my own proof. Sheriff, Lieutenant's got a birthmark on his chest that proves what I say is true. Take a look. Now, are you satisfied with what you see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought you would be. You would be. I... I'm sorry about the mistake. Yes, me too. I hope you won't say anything to Mary about this. You know, just uh, sort of keep it among ourselves. I uh, sure, sure, Mr. Fremont. No hard feelings. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Let's go. What are we going to do about Morrison? We'll get him. We've got to get him. He's the only one that stands between us and a fortune. I want to thank you, boy. For a while there, I thought I'd be where Lieutenant Morrison is. Say, Billy, you know, it seems to me the same party that put Morrison out of the way tried to do the same thing to you. That's right. Two of those hombres back there are mighty anxious to get that rope around my neck. Crawford and that fellow they call Fremont. Ah, that dirty, ornery gophers. Why don't we tell the sheriff? No, no, there's no proof. But, Billy, we can't let that tubble let in, Mary. No, who said we were, Jeff? Come on. my money. Now, now let me go. Well, that's mighty generous of you, but money's not what we're looking for. No? Well, what then? You? Me? 
but, but, but I'm on my way to a wedding. My wedding. And I'll keep it a secret. Keep our fat friend company. You think I won't? Where's Fremont? I don't know. Why, you dumb head. This is no time for name calling. Come on, man. taken from that body on the stage. George Fremont. Then this is proof that Fatty ain't Fremont. Proof for us, Jeff, but no one else. What we need is real proof. Proof that'll stop Crawford and that Fatty guy there on the run. What's this? Wait a minute. This is all the proof we're looking for. Listen to this. Dear Uncle George, I'll be at your wedding if I have to fight my way through a tribe of Indians. I've canceled my concert tour just for you. Lieutenant Morrison is as handsome as you say he is. I might stay in Yancey. Your loving niece, Linda. Well, she'll probably get in on the next stage. Let's find out if Fatty knows he's got a niece. You know, Fatty, you ought to reduce. The best way to do that is to go on a skunk diet. Daddy, you got any relatives we can send your body to? B body? No. Not even a niece? Huh? Uh, what are you going to do with me? Visit to the buzzers. Linda first. Stealing a groom on his wedding day and right under our nose. Here comes the stagecoach. Maybe the driver's seen something. Hey, driver, you seen any outlaws? Well, no. I haven't seen a thing, Sheriff. What's wrong, Sheriff? Oh, outlaws, ma'am. Probably murdered a man named George Fremont. Uncle George? What's that? Well, George Fremont is my uncle. I'm Linda Fremont. Didn't know he had a niece. Did you, Mill? Why, no, I didn't. Oh, this is horrible. Poor Uncle George. Don't worry too much about it, ma'am. We'll probably catch him. I, uh, Sheriff. Don't you think we'd better let Turtle ride along with the stage? There's no telling what those bandits might do next. It's a good idea. Go ahead, Turtle. Yes, sir.
been shot. Looks like Crawford beat us to it. Come on. Right, man? Yes, but why did that man shoot the driver? I'll have to answer that in a minute. You hit that, partner? Uh, no, I just nicked my shoulder, I think. I'll be all right in a little bit. Oh, uh, that's fine. Well, now I guess I better start this from the beginning. You see? Well, there's not a sign of Fremont or them bandits. Well, Sheriff, we've got to do something. Hey, you act as if this marriage meant a lot to you. Why... Why, no, I was just thinking of Mary Todd. Well, that's the whole story, ma'am. But you can still help Aunt Mary. I'll do anything. I guess you thought of trust Billy the kid, huh? I'll trust Billy the kid. Driver, make it back to town all right? Yeah. Don't worry about me. That's fine. Now, Jeff, we're going through this wedding. So get on out to Fuzzy and tell him to let Fatty loose. Then meet me at the ranch. Right. Miss Linda, mind sharing my horse with me? Not at all. Jump by. Eat up, Jeff. All right, you can go and get married. I'll have the law on you for this. Get out! <laughs> it's Freeman. Bandits held me up. Well, we haven't time to be looking for bandits now. That'll be the sheriff's job after the wedding. Come on, Mary Todd's waiting. Is there anyone present who can show cause why this couple should not be united in holy wedlock? Just a moment. marriage. I'm Linda Fremont, George Fremont's niece. This man is not my uncle, he's an imposter. The man performing the ceremony is a swindler and a murderer. How about that, Crawford? Come on, 
back with me, Crawford. Now get going. Miss Linda, I, I want you to do us a favor. Of course, Billy. What is it? I care of Aunt Mary. Tell her that uh, there's no one that could take Lieutenant Morrison's place, either in the Army or as her nephew. But it was a pleasure for me anyway. I will, Billy. And thank you for everything. No trouble. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, Miss Linda. Goodbye. 